So now at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Anderson. So Dr. Anderson, would you come and join me at the platform? Let's give a big hand. <laughs> Dr. Anderson, a Trans World accreditation. What an honor for us to work with you, to have you be at our first AIU graduation, that we have an accredited school. It was so exciting. Amen. So I will give you the platform at this time. Thank you, sir. Such an honor to be here. Apostles, Dr. Pastor Gregory Brown and <laughs> his lovely wife, and uh, Dr. Lorraine Coleman, your dean, all the staff and faculty, and those visitors here, but to you, the graduates that have invested the time that has brought you to this place to make this team so proud. You, as our brother Walter has pointed out, you have found your identity, and now you can be healthy with what you've been identified and trained to do. Trans World Accrediting Commission International that comes here tonight to confer your accreditation upon you has been around around 30 years. We are non-governmental accreditation, and that doesn't mean that we don't respect the government. In indeed, we do and thank God for the United States and individually the state of Arizona. In fact, it's because we have such a great nation that we have laws that enable the church through exemption to be the church, to have a voice, to have the freedom to exercise freely our faith, and to also have Bible schools and churches and pastors that are not dictated to by Caesar what we are to teach and preach. We're free to follow the dictates of the Word of God and follow our God. Amen. Many of you may have gone or are going to a state university or some other liberal arts or general ed or core curriculum type of educational system that is government accredited and we don't we're not in competition we're just different because they are governmental regulated and we are kingdom regulated Amen. that is by our peers with over a thousand institutions now that are under the trans world banner evangelical institutions where we have shared biblical doctrine we all hold to the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ which as we heard tonight is so important to you, the inerrancy and infallibility of the Holy Word of God, the Trinity, the shortcoming of our Lord, the rewards that are given, and the mandate to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. As, I, as we were taking pictures earlier, a young lady named Kimberly was talking to me about how excited she was about what's happening here at Skyway, Skyway and AIU. And uh, I said, we'll just keep going from here. And she says, as long as it's about souls at the very end. Amen. And that speaks to what Walter identified as being healthy. A healthy church will win people. You will add sons and daughters. There are a lot of churches that don't feel it is important to train. But I will tell you tonight that any ministry that fails to train is on a train to fail. And we're glad to see the Church of Jesus Christ worldwide rise to the occasion to train their people, Amen. especially spirit-filled, charismatic, Pentecostal ministry. <laughs> yes. Amen. In times past in church history, many in spirit-filled circles felt like the Holy Spirit will teach me all things. I don't need man to train me. Well, we know different. Yes. And in the current revival that's been going on over the past 20 years, there is a revival in education coming to the Spirit-filled church. And, and the Apostle Paul, whom your pastor quoted from tonight, he was one that personally oversaw the school at Tyrannus when it was nothing but debating and religious and all these things he mentioned that you don't get into were going on. He separated 12 men in the school of Tyrannus for a two-year Bible program. And from that program, the health came by changing Asia Minor. 
That was under the apostles' work, the apostle Paul. The first dean, the first Bible school president in all of history was Moses. God personally chose Moses to lead a Bible school, to write the first five books of the Bible, which is a very healthy diet of curriculum. It covers every facet, history, law, so forth and so on. And God gave that task to Moses, not a board of regents. Now, from there, you know that there was Elisha who received a great anointing, a double portion of what Elijah had. With that double portion, what did he do? Expanded the school of the prophets, just like you're doing in your 10-year plan ahead of you. You're expanding. That surely demonstrates what a double portion of anointing is upon your work. Amen. Then we had in the Bible a lady named Hannah that was vexed and made fun of because she couldn't have any children. She went to God and vowed a vow. Give me a son, I'll give him to you. Samuel became the president of Ramah in the Old yeah, Testament. That's right. Such power of God flowed through that school. Some people say, well, I would go to Bible school, but I don't care to lose my fire. You go to this Bible school, your fire will rage for God. <laughs> So much of the fire of God was present in that school under Samuel that when David was on the run from Saul, the one place he found safe harbor was at the school of the prophets. Wow. While he was there, when Saul sent messengers to kill him, they began to prophesy instead. To where Saul said, I'll go kill him myself. And what happened to him? 24-hour revival. He was hit by the power of God. Amen. That's the, that's the key health we want to see in our Bible schools the fire of God, the pure word of God, sound doctrine that in the last days the Bible declares many will depart from. But not you, you're embracing it and it's making you great. And that's what Trans World Accrediting Commission wants to make certain of. The reason that we like to see the pastor, the apostle of the ministry in charge of our schools is because that's who God has chosen. Now, government accreditation chooses a different path. They would not want to see the pastor involved or his wife. In fact, none of the leadership in the church would really be allowed to be over the Bible school. They want it separated. They also do not want you to mingle funds. They also do not want you to mingle property. What does that do? Politically rigs it to where the church is eliminated from the education of the congregants that are therein. We don't see that as God's plan in God's kingdom. Amen. That's Caesar's plan. It's not God's. Yep. God wants the overseers to make sure that you are rooted and grounded just like he read from 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. That is our mandate. We follow the Lord. We respect what secular education does as far as training and equipping us for secular and liberal arts facets in life. But when it comes to the word of God, and training people to deal as you're dealing from your interns and your chaplains. You're dealing with matters of life and death. Yes. You are there with them from birth, weddings, funerals, every facet of it. When it's hospice care. You know, I remember when I started out in ministry, I would go with my dad even as a little boy who was in ministry 73 years, a Pentecostal minister. And I remember some of the times it was horror on people's faces as they knew they were going into eternity without God and they would scream out in pain and horror. Well, because of modern medicine, that doesn't happen much anymore. A lot of people don't even realize they're about to exit this life because of so much modern medication. Sorcery, the Bible describes this as. Medication is needed, but they dummy people out to where they don't know what's going on. It's your job as chaplains by the Spirit of God to break through the wall that Satan would erect to blind the heart and blind the mind that not only exists here, but in every part of the world. And that is why you're an international school. You are to invade the darkness with the light and bring the light of God's truth wow. and see Amen. people truly born again, changed Ooh, yeah. by the glory of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> Praise our God. When you land on heaven's shore and you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, you'll hear the master say, well done, good and faithful servant. Yeah. And look who you brought with you. Like Kimberly said, souls, baby, hallelujah. Amen. You've got them there. And they're receiving their rewards to sit at the master's feet. And on that day, we'll have robes. <laughs> the royal robes will be unfurled and given on, from him to you. Crowns will be given. What do we do with the crowns? We set them at the master's feet. Amen. Degree granting started way back in Deuteronomy chapter 31. Moses, the first Bible school president, bring to me your doctors. Well, they certainly weren't doctors of medicine or doctors in law. They were doctors in theology. Jesus was with the doctors uh, in, as a Bible school president, if you will, on the faculty. I want you to know, degree granting belongs to the church. 103 out of 106 universities that began in the United States of America started out with a, a basis to train the literate clergy. Reverend John Harvard started Harvard University to train clergy, just like you're doing it here. But they walked away from it, but you're taking it back. <laughs> Princeton University. Princeton is a great university. In their founding purpose, you can read in their history. As they formed that university, any education taught here at Princeton that does not include the gospel of Jesus Christ is cursed. It's in Princeton's founding purpose. But if you look very far on Princeton campus, you don't see much cross of Jesus Christ being taught to the students. In fact, it's modernism. It's walked away. It's denying godliness. And it's, it's not believing the word of God. They've walked away. We're taking it back. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to. Like so many man-made institutions on this earth, they get away and they drift from their founding purpose. But God has a way of bringing us back. And his way of doing it is called revival. Yep. And revival is sweeping the land. Our days are great ahead of us. Our purpose is set. I couldn't say one thing to add to the purpose that's been laid out before you today. Here you can find your identity and you can develop a healthy lifestyle of teaching others as you are taught from interns, chaplains, through doctorate level. We want you to be able to have your degree as you carry on and go forth because it qualifies you really from God to be identified as someone that is skilled and trained and able to step up and to do what you're trained to do. It speaks of your institution and it speaks of all of us in trans world accrediting. We have some of the finest institutions in the kingdom of God that are a part of our group. Rama Bible Training College, been around 42 years, 60,000 graduates. Wow. They're a part of your family. We're one big team. Pastor spoke of a team and we are a team that can win. Jensen Franklin, Free School of Discipleship, on and on, some of the great ministries uh, in, in America that are spirit-filled around the world are part of Transworld. I invite you to go to our website, transworldaccrediting.com. Go to Facebook and follow us, or Twitter. You'll see your pictures of your graduation tonight. But we want you to see what God is doing. It will, it will thrill your soul to know that there is an accrediting commission. And I'll just clue you into a secret. We do have a lot of Baptists. We have some Methodists, mostly evangelical, but I want to tell you, and I'm glad to announce because I'm a Holy Ghost preacher. I want you to know, and that's why our growth is so exponential, is because we don't just have boiler room people Amen. that have academic knowledge telling the church what to do. That's why we don't look to a secular board of regents to guide your pastor. We look to men and women of God who are generals of the faith, like you're following Peter Wagner, like we have. Our senior commissioner is Charles E. Monroe. He was on the Saratoga in 1941 when uh, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. He was on the Saratoga, and then he went back on a plane and was shot down by the Japanese. Distinguished Flying Cross in the United States Navy, Charles Monroe went from there to pastor a church. He became the dean of the Assembly of God School in California and organized them. And then he went to Christ for the Nations in Dallas, Texas, 
and then he joined Morris Cirillo School of Evangelism. Today he's our senior commission, uh, commissioner at 92 years old, going on 93, in excellent health, wow. serving all of our schools. Wow. We have a multitude of generals of the faith. Those are our peers. Those are the ones we answer to, not Caesar. But Caesar gives us the freedom by exemption to effectively walk in that freedom to be self-policed by our peers and you the people and our institutions. You are our strength and we're growing every day. We're widely accepted by universities of all kinds that do accept our credits. It's not guaranteed, it's subjective, but the doors have opened and we're being accepted more and more. But one key thing I wanna tell you before you leave here, the one great thing about having a school here, you could go to Regent, Liberty, ORU, a lot of great Christian universities. But the key about this, it's not $500 a credit hour. It's affordable. And now more than ever, we hear it in the political campaigns, we wanna lift the student debt load. Well, you're not gonna leave here with student debt because this is part of the kingdom. You're gonna leave here with the ability to have money to get married, to buy a car, a house, and to bankroll a ministry that God births in your heart. That's Woo! what I call healthy, hallelujah. Amen. We want you to have the money to go do what God has called you to do. And that's one of the great things that we can do with the school right here where you're at. And so, uh, whatever you choose to do, it's fine. But we believe you have something great right here in this area of Arizona. And from here, you're gonna reach the world. Apostle Brown, Amen. you call it international because it's designed that way. You're gonna have affiliates by that 10 years. I would predict you'll have two to 500 schools that are affiliates of AIU. Yeah. That this is the home campus and they're around yeah. the world. It's happening. When I met with Kenneth Hagin Jr., they had 130. Now they're at 260. The same word went there. Affiliates are joining up. It's going to be out and up. The fruit is going to be great. The harvest is plenteous. And you're at the helm. And your people are behind you. And so are we. And we salute you today, sir. And thank God for what he's doing with Ascend International University. Hallelujah. Thank you.